What's good, family? You already know who it is. It's the Brown Brother coming to you with another video. Please like, share, subscribe. I greet y'all peace, positivity, and most importantly, power as we go about being a melanin person in America. Please like, share, subscribe. Hope everybody's doing well. Hey, so I'm looking a little snazzy. Got my little tie on, my little shirt, whatever. Which I always dress like this. But I, I'm bringing back the How to Be Black 101 series. I call it my critical acclaim series because it did pretty well. People actually enjoyed it. Uh, with even the few numbers that we did draw in. And um, I we did topics as complex as non-ether um, and melanin. And we did topics as simple, but at just as in, not just as important, but just as important as being a physical being. We talked about financial security, such as how to have good credit. Uh, the How to Be Black One on One series is not teaching people, black people or non-black people, or as we as has uh, the thing that got ESPN in an uproar, how they were calling people cornball brothers or whatever, meaning that your your uh, Oreo or just any stupid context that you can use of a person who's supposed to be have non-black tendencies or whatever. I don't understand how they, I don't understand where that came from that whole segment, but it it was a segment. Um, this is not no teaching nobody how to be black or whatever. It's teaching us as a people how to be the best version of us possible. You know, I got it from the context of James Brown. I say a lot on Black and I'm Proud. We went from so many words, so many uh, things to describe us until we use the word black. And, and they tried to say it was a negative connotation or a negative word associated with that. It was negativity. And I think we took that and tried to make it positive. Now, I, I either way, I use it interchangeably, black or African-American. I use them interchangeably, but I use them not attaching anything negative to it because I have positive reinforcement of understanding of myself, of spirituality, mental, physical strength and ability uh, and, and mental capacity and knowledge and wisdom. So uh, how to be black series is basically us just how to be the best us possible, explaining things very simple. I would say that if you're just beginning to learn consciousness or reinforce it or just hear my truth. Uh, uh, 1,000% with no opinion and no objectivity, and I believe to start with the How to Be Black 101 series, I would definitely probably gonna make that a playlist. But let's just hop right into it. How to Be Black, this is probably episode 6 or 7. And today we're going to talk about the Black family structure. What is the Black family structure, Baron Brother? Well, the Black family structure is the basis that uh, strong, cohesive unit. Uh, it usually consists of the husband, the wife, um, the children and then the grandparents and so forth and so on. But the black family structure is a, is a bond, is a unit. Um, it's, 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 like, um, it's like peanut butter and jelly. It, it has to be together or, or it will not be good. As separate is divide and conquer. Separate is weak. Together is strong. The man is, again, the masculine force. The woman is the feminine force. And the masculine and feminine energies work together, not clashing against each other against one another, but using each other's strength and weaknesses and complementing each other so well that it's one unit. You know, I believe that uh, as we were taken uh, on ships and kidnapped and brought over here to this country, uh, we left all uh, uh, the majority of our culture, our customs, our essence, our values uh, over uh, in the eastern regions of the world to be brought over here to the western uh, world and um, when people hear the family structure, they say man's supposed to dominate, woman's supposed to be submissive, and automatically because women have gone through which it has years of oppression uh, at the hands of not us as black men because black men were basically not able to vote and that around the same basically around the same time women were not allowed to vote. Uh, uh, and to be, I mean, can we just keep it one thousand percent honest with you? Uh, the black man and woman have have gone through it, you know, together. But as of lately, as we've become, I guess, equal or whatever, you know, I'm hearing this: the woman struggle is the man struggling. We got to clash against one another, which is just is beyond crazy. You know, it it shouldn't be like that. But um, the family structure is supposed to complement. You know, I could tell you of queens in Africa who, when the husbands went to go fight in wars or went to go trade. The wife, not the son, but the wife was left in charge over the tribe and then left to make all the decisions. I can go show you African art and, and Egyptian art uh, uh, where um, it's so beautiful uh, of, a, of a sculpture that was made or of made of some kind of casting molding. Gold molding was made of a king and queen. And on the thing, he was wearing one sandal and she was wearing one sandal. And the way that my 
uh, professor, uh, educator, educator, my college professor explained it. And after further, I'd done further research and did my black consci uh, consciousness and did my own research. It's found true that all of us could agree or all, all of the statements were true. That the reason why they depicted them as having one sandal on each, it wasn't no weird, crazy hairstyle like how everybody was shaving one side of their head ball. Y'all remember that trend? I ain't got to talk about it. Summer 2012, but I digress. Um, but he, they were wearing the one sandals to show that everything that I own, half of it is yours. You know, like that California law is the husband has to automatically give 50% to his wife. But it was like that but a bond and a structure of everything I own is yours, but mine is yours. I believe the wedding ceremony, this is my last thing I'm getting to the facts, but y'all know I, I talk. I try to talk about it a little bit more. The wedding ceremony that I find is so beautiful when the when the man and the woman have salt and or sugar or whatever, and the man has his cup of salt and the woman has hers, and they pour the salt into each other, and what they were saying, pour the salt into each other's cups and was saying, was mine is yours, but yours is mine. We cannot be split because you cannot, after you've put those two salts together, nobody can go, even if, even if they're colored, even if they are blue and pink for the man and woman, you cannot go separate them grains of salt, grains of sugar. It's impossible, almost. I guess maybe it has some kind of ro crazy robotic technology, but it's, it's crazy. You can't do that because what's mine is yours, what's yours is mine. We are two people are now one. So that's the family structure based on that, but used as a husband, wife, kids, masculine energy, feminine energy, and a product of the masculine and feminine energy. That's why the divine trinity, the masculine, the feminine, and the product of that. Uh, you know, that's why they always say, you know, the son of God is the product of the masculine and feminine. In some weird way, I guess you could say that. I don't want to say it like that because I don't want to mislead nobody, but that's just the way I interpret it. Like the unk, how it's the man, you know, physical physical essence and a woman physical energy the circle and the in the in the stick you know it's it's you know it's divine divine unity i should say so that's the that's the family that's the husband and wife structure and then once they reproduce that becomes the family structure of husband wife children unit together but the black family structure uh was uh in somewhat way left in africa um, which it was, it's not no some weird way, it was a lot of the customs of uh, we adopted the, as a, a male dominated society, and you know, which is true. You know, I do believe that the man should, you know, uh, you know, be head of household, you know, they should make decisions together. But I believe the pro protective provider predominantly falls on the man. I'm old school, that's just the way I am. I'm young, but I'm old school, that's just the way I was taught, that's just the way I was raised. And I've seen households where it worked like that, and I've seen households where it weren't like that, and a household where the man was the provider and, and took care of everything and, and, and offered the discipline, but also some form of nurturing, but in his own way, in the masculine engine, the woman provided her pro providing and her protection, but also the nurturing in her own way, the, 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 um, the masculine and feminine energy, the household just ran more smoothly. So I digress. But the black family structure was left in Africa. Now you say, brown brother, how is the family structure left in Africa? It was left in Africa because the majority of our customs and our culture uh, um, were um, left in Africa. So, of course, our culture was already stripped from us, African name, African roots, African heritage. Um, but then at a particular point as well, because of such a male-dominated society, years and years later, after we all become equal racially, we are not equally as much gender-wise. Now, I don't mean that gender on black man and black woman, because a black woman can find a job more easily than a black man. A, a, a white male who's been priorly convicted of a crime is more likely to get a job than a black man with no record. But a black woman is, is almost two times more likely to get a job than a black man. It's, it's more opportunities for the sisters out there. And that's not me you know, throwing no shade like, oh, y'all got it easy. No, y'all got it just as hard, if not as hard, harder. But you understand where I'm coming from. And so many things have been done to attack the black man. Um, and, it's, and it's just me being honest. You know, I, I, if you have, if you disagree, then I, I definitely understand. I respect your opinion, but it is what it is. So um, as we begin to that male-dominated society, uh, we begin to clash. We, even before then, like second, so all of our culture was left in Africa. And we begin to, um, we began to, um, be broken up and, and torn apart and, and raped 
was such a, 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 a you know a, 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 a major cause of uh, physical, emotional, psychological trauma, not only amongst women, but if you can go back and, and you can look at some awful tactics that they used to even do that to me. It just, it was, it was, it was the brutalization of, of, of a people that, 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 uh, it's it, on the grandest scale possible. And, uh, you know, slavery was awful. And I want to read a part before I get into my quote unquote lecture. I know I've been burning your ear off for the last 10 minutes, but I believe I'm building a case. And we're going this video is gonna be about 25 minutes. So if you can watch part one and maybe have to come back and watch part two, I definitely understand. Uh, but we're gonna definitely hop right into uh, the black family structure. And I wanna read you a, a, a part of a text from my uh, sociology book, uh, one of my old college textbooks. And this was written, I think by a non-black person, but it doesn't matter. But you understand where I'm coming from. I, I, I want to do this video uh, and use objectivity and non-objectivity and use them interchangeably. But I'll read you this. For example, how can we understand the modern, modern meaning the current, African-American family outside the deliberate policies of slavery? Meaning how can we understand the black family structure after the fact of being brutalized for hundreds of years, after the fact of having policies and also not only just slavery, but post-slavery having policies that attack the black family structure. So it says, for example, how can we understand the modern African-American family outside the deliberate policy of slavery, whereby, whereas, or as a result, families were broken up, families were split up, where families were broken up and the husband, wives, and children deliberately sold to different slave owners. So basically meaning when you came over here to America, you were stripped of your family structure when they d divide and conquer you know when you divide it you can conquer it but when we're together we're a family unit no matter what happens we can stick together and we can do it but that was taken away and the family structure was were robbed in years and years and years you still see that generational curse of the black family structure being robbed you still see not only a generational curse but the generational attack to make sure that the black family structure stays broken up and it says the deliberate policies of slavery uh, whereby families were broken up, husband, wives, and children deliberately sold to different slave owners. And here was, here was the kicker. So as to dilute, as to water down, as to destroy, as to de uh, deliberately debolish, abolish, as to uh, dilute the power of family as a tie of loyalty to something other than a slave master. So that basically means to break up the family so that they must now to be stripped of the power that they have, the emotional, physical uh, strength that they have and emotional bond to family so that they may give all that up and use all that effort to serve their master. That's as cruel and just as, I wouldn't say cruel, but just as bad as anything you can do without family you are absolutely nothing j cole says the best he said what's money without happiness or hard times this is the kicker what's money without happiness j cole said inside the song love yours what's money without happiness or hard times without the people you love and that's what happened they, we were going through the hardest time ever just like now we're going through the hardest time ever economically physically spiritually mentally and you're doing it without the people you love you see what i'm saying as to you begin to now, as a result, whether it be as a, a adaption standpoint or or, or or from a emotional uh, uh, unfit state, you begin to uh, now put your loyalty into the master, whatever that may be, maybe money, maybe greed, maybe uh, women, it may be uh, uh, this drug game or, or quote unquote being a uh, 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 or whatever kind of just stupid messes out there nowadays. You see what I'm saying? Or, or again, or join the gang because you're doing that to try to find love and something else. All these tennis shoes, $300 for tennis shoes, all this kind of mess and robbing people and killing people. And, and not saying nothing negative towards us, but that could be any person. If you deliberately take away family, loved ones, uh, uh, stress relievers, uh, freedom and energy, uh, away from us to express ourselves, any race, any age group of people, you'll begin to revolt and you'll begin to turn negative and turn towards other negative things. So what is the black family structure? The black family structure, again, I don't know, have I said this already? I deleted one video to try to make it again. It's the man, the woman, the masculine energy, the feminine energy. That's why you got the aunt 
and so forth and so on is the masculine energy and the feminine energy. And then as a the product of reproduction, the 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 product of the masculine and feminine energy which causes the black family structure. Um I, I just like say again, I just believe that that with the black family structure you will see so fewer problems than we actually have, whether it be financially, whether it be mentally, physically, whatever it may be, you will see so much better things. That, and there have been policies and systematic racism, institutional racism, educational racism to make sure they destroy uh, the black family. Um, so you see, we have that black family structure, but it's happened years and years and years uh, of degeneration uh, of or or destruction of the black family structure, diluting it uh, since the beginning of slavery. Um, and now what you see here is a product of not having a black family structure. But when we do have a black family structure, because 84% of black, 86% uh, of black men still marry black women. Uh, of course, all the statistics and all these other sh TV shows want to show like black men, black men are such dogs and black men and black women hate each other. And we're not getting together. But yes, we are. I go to a store any given Saturday and that's the majority of who you're going to see. You're going to see a black man or a black woman. You're going to see the kids. That's the black family structure. Living together, pulling all the resources together. The black man being the Again, the, the provider, protector, having a disciplinary energy as well as a nurturing energy, but just in its own masculine way. One not higher than the other, but both complementing each other where the other is weak. This one helps that make that one strong, but as a unit, they would come together uh, and so forth and so on. And I believe a lot of stress, heart attacks, um, uh, so much things. I believe if parents, two parents within the, two parents in the household, the other parent would have to work so much if it's just one parent uh, being smart will constantly be there to watch the children. And the children would not be able, they would have discipline in the household and so forth and so on. And just so much that would happen. But the family structure is messed up right now. But for those who are out of black family structure, I applaud them. And that's why I have channels like this and make videos like this to hopefully uplift and build a black family structure. I think one of the most important things that as a young black man that I can do is impart, in, impart my wisdom on this generation as well as the generation before that and help raise strong black men. That's the biggest gift I can give any black woman or any black community, period, is to help raise strong men so we can all come together from a collective society and collective effort uh, and one another come help each other to build a black nation. Uh, and just build black people, just period, you know, because we need it. Um, but the black family structure is set up where we can all feed off each other and, and be around each other and, uh, and help each other out. Family is singly the most important thing. It's a union of people that live together and identify, eat, sleep, and basically breathe uh, the same air and same resources uh, so that we can live and, 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 and shape and make and become what we are as humans. Let me go back to my book and see for a moment do I have um, where uh, I, 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 I made a couple of lights of family. Um, but talking about family, the family unit is both hard and easy to define. And common sense is defined as a group of people related by blood or marriage. The family is also a collective of cross-generation descendants. It's a term that comprises all, comprises all members of any category that are related to one another as members of the family. Uh, the members are, are are logically or legally related to one another, and uh, you know I just think that families uh, uh, help each other and, and one another, and able to love one another, and teach each other important values and strength. The man is able to teach his son how to hunt, how to fish, how to how to talk, how to walk, how to breathe. How when you shake a man's hand, that word is bond. And so many young men are hurting because they do not have fathers. The statistic came out and said that probably seventy-five percent of all um, uh, men in, in, this, in certain jails and certain prisons, or, or over uh, over at least sixty-five percent, uh, do not have a father to come from single-parent households. So again, it's just it's a lot of stuff. So the black family structure uh, has to come together and be together. Then I want to talk about two, uh, the Afrocentric uh, black extended family. Uh, nowadays, you, you still see some of it, but not as nurturing as it used to be. I watch a brother on YouTube named Mr. Ron Willis. Uh, and, you know, uh, of course, you may not agree with everything he said. Like, he probably won't agree with everything I say. But I believe in my consciousness now, I need, you know, you need those straight, no chaser people. And I, I definitely I have no, I have no um, 
fear in telling y'all who I watch and what I watch because I'm sure it's it's the internet. It's very accessible to go inside my my web browser history and find everything. So I don't mind telling y'all I watch the majority of, of his videos. And the brother just real straight, and he was talking about how when he was growing up, I believe he said in Baltimore, and uh, he lived. Um, and I just heard the story a few minutes ago. I think his name was Mr. Green or something. He was saying uh, he lived in a in a in a in law suite with him, his mother, and his sister. And he went outside to go try to learn how to ride a bike on his own. He had no father, or maybe his father was not present at the time, or whatever. And he was saying that Mr. Uh, the dude who who I guess owned the property was dressed to the nine suit and tie on and everything, and he saw him struggling, and he saw that young black boy, and as him being a black man, he had to impart and take impart some knowledge, some wisdom, some form of let me pass it down to him. So he said he he said uh, the dude grabbed him by his neck and told him pedal boy and and don't you know don't don't stop you know basically. So at that particular point, he was teaching him how to how to ride a bike, something that a father is supposed to do, something that a grandfather, an elder, uh, somebody in your family is supposed to do. It's extended family that either related or non-related, somebody that you can count on and depend on and help raise that child. <clears throat> An African proverb says it takes a village to raise a child. And in so many uh, villages and, and neighborhoods and cultures and things you tell you before this quote-unquote uh, hip hop era where now if you say somebody somebody a child or even if it's an old person you know you know the parent get mad like don't say a blanket thing to my child some 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 whatever they get mad you know when you try to collect make a collective effort to try to raise the child now not everybody should have a part in raising your child but at the same time you know I back in the day you know when when prayer was still allowed in school and and whippings were still allowed in school, and so many things were still allowed in school. To me, things just went back. Not whipping as in, in public humili humiliation, but some form of discipline. Time out at least, or sit down, or, or the gym will make you run laps. So, you know, that's how I remember. At least some some form of something to kind of correct, you know, that, you know, whatever. And nowadays, kids go to school and, and, and go come home to an empty house with no discipline. And the streets is, is, is where it's at, and, and, and the streets ain't never been good. Not now, not 1400 uh, BC. The streets ain't never been nowhere to be at. And you, you never need to be out there. You need to learn discipline in the household with some kind of structural uh, uh, format. And the only structure that is offered now, unfortunately, to the black community and to the majority of the community, but particularly ours, because of systematic educational and institutional racism, is prison. Prison tell you when to eat, when to sleep, when you can shower. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 they tell you when you can ha have time to child time, when you can watch TV. That's all. That's discipline. That's structure. Tell you when to open your cell, your cage, because you're an animal. You know, uh, slavery is still legal only by the uh thing of incarceration, which I believe is the Thirteenth Amendment, which allows that. Um, but yeah, but the black family structure is the is the Afro extended family, which I believe that. Uh, the book that I had, which was my second reference, which was Young Black Man Emerging, or just Black Man Emerging, uh, by Dr. White, which he talked about, and Dr. Combs and Dr. White, which they talked about uh, young black man and Afrocentric family and how we are, can survive and thrive um, with the with the black extended family. Uh, black Man Emerging, right here. Can you see that? Can you see upside down? My bad. Can y'all see that? Black Man Emerging by Dr. This is a solid book. I'm beginning to get back in my consciousness once again. And I'm going to start the year off by finishing this book in the next 10 days from cover to cover, 11 days, whatever I'm reading this on the Christmas break. Um, but um, it talks about the Afro extended family and how it's so important to the success of the black community because it takes a village to raise a child. And very people can help and come in and impart wisdom and knowledge and, and truth and, and some discipline and and for those who need that nourishment uh uh that nourish uh 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 uh, uh, meant, uh not just food resource of food but also nourishment of mental spiritual uh growth and development as well as nourishment from the masculine energy with this uh growth development and truth and uh helping them to understand respect and responsibility the two and most important r's in the dictionary respect and responsibility um, in the black man period, probably the two most important words in a, in a black man life, uh, uh, the two most important words in life are respect and responsibility. 
with those two things, you can darn near anything can happen, and it will fix the any problem that we have. Period. Um, uh, if you have respect and responsibility, the rest will will find and work its way. The rest of it will work out. So the black family structure is one cohesive unit, but a tight unit with few members in it. Depends on how many children you have, I guess. But the masculine energy, the feminine energy, and the product of which. So I only add those as three. No matter how many children you have, I only add those as three. Uh, the family in this in this sociology book it also talked about you know polygamy pol uh polygamy malignity whatever all that kind of mess but you should only be inside of a uh uh um monogamous relationship i believe it is one man one woman that's just my opinion and at that particular point it's such a black family structure outside of that tight bond structure you have the grandparents you have the uncles you have the cousins you even have maybe one to two close friends i wouldn't say having too many people interjected in your life but you may have that childhood friend that you grew up with who he was like that child's auntie and uh you know even though you're not blood related you're spiritually and mentally uh fully invested and related to one another and you know that that person will not bring in physical mental spiritual harm or trauma to your child so you would trust that person interjected into your household now bring in physical mental or spiritual trauma to you or your spouse uh 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 life so you know you have those one or two people uh, that you trust and then and, and then there's the next door neighbor and the downstairs and even you make it your first job i mean everybody hates chris how uh, mr doc used to be on who has had a corner store you see what i'm saying so it's just those little gyms your 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 basketball coach uh your uh, you, you know for the ladies and you know for the ladies you know there's a women's basketball coach and for the guys the boys basketball coaching i think by even the basketball coach who had a uh, tremendous impact on my life you know, I think about the mentors I've had over the years who were friends of the family, you know, who mentored, you know, me. You see what I'm saying? So it's that's the that's the Afrocentric extended family. So I continuously and consistently had male role models, positive male role models who got up and worked every day and and, and diverse backgrounds from military to athletes to uh uh doctors to 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 you know street smart to book smart to going to the barber shop i mean oh women energies uh you some say all the I had my grandma I had my aunties I had my mom had you know uh cousins had anybody who who that that feminine energy who can you know teach the how to balance everything and that life is about balance and and taught me the value of patience uh whether as a male taught me the value of responsibility and respect they all the women also taught me the ideal of responsibility and respect but just in different contexts and in different situations so i had that balance of the extended family and the um and the intermediate family structure so the black family structure has layers to it the back but the black family structure is maybe the most single most important thing that you can have um so how to be black one-on-one -on -one. i hope i covered what the black family structure is and just if i didn't let me dot all my i's and cross all my t's and let me give you the the exact definition of black family i'm type i can't believe it. i'm actually typing uh without even looking at the screen because i've gotten just that used to um computers and all this kind of mess uh breakdown of the black family structure discovery discover the network.com black family structure here we go wikipedia uh y'all somebody hit on wikipedia said that black family structure has long the black the, the family structure african america has long been a matter of national public policy whatever uh that's not what i want to talk about i just want to talk about i just want to give y'all a solid definition of what the black family structure was um it's basically a cohesive unit of people that love one another that respect one another that ultimate uh role is to try to build uh, uh, great uh, uh, help in defeating racism, uh, institutional, educational, and psychological, emotional, uh, spiritual, uh, whatever. And it is there to bring about help in every way. And, and according to discoverednetworks.org, uh, a guide to whatever. So according to the modern day civil rights establishment, most of the problems that currently afflict the African American family result directly from the uh, uh, attacks of racism and continue to uh, play the black community. But it says, uh, have largely believed.
that the African American structure can help in defeating those causes of, uh, or as a result of what happens when racism and uh, 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 all kind of dis. Uh, proportionary uh, 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 attacks are brought upon us. So, you know, that that's just it. The black family structure is it's the mom, dad, grandparents, whatever, that extended families, your barbers, or so many people who impart so much wisdom and knowledge upon you. Um, again, the choice is yours as always, but the black family structure has always been key to uh, black people and, and our success and our movement. And I can't tell you, you know, just establish automatically try to find somebody or whatever. But I would definitely say that, you know, definitely look, you know, for knowledge and wisdom and everywhere. Even if you don't find it, but on the Internet, is such a beautiful place because you can look at brothers like Ron Willis. You can find brothers like um, C.T. Fletcher and like Kylie Muscle and like so many OGs who lived a life before. You can kind of impart that knowledge and that wisdom. Dr. Umar Johnson, you know, and just so many people who can kind of, you know, give you the give you the straight truth, uh, straight up no chases. So, yeah, they're out there. You see what I'm saying? But. You know, that's the black family structure has always been attacked and tried to and try to be destroyed. And that's why we're having some of the problems right now. Not saying us, because, again, I don't criticize. I just say, what can we do to fix it and become better and become the best us possible? Even we all were driving Bentleys up the street tomorrow. I would still be saying, what can we do to make anything and everything better? If one child suffered then it, you know, a week we need we need to reexamine life and say, what can we do better? Because I don't even want one child to even struggle. So that's the black family structure and the importance of it. This is a brown brother. Peace and blessing each and every one of y'all. I'm on to the next one. Peace.